The summit of the non-aligned movement got underway this week in Uganda's capital Kampala, where delegations for Somalia and the Palestinian people are lobbying for support. While the Palestinians are urging members to find a way to end the conflict in Gaza, Somalia says it needs support to maintain its territorial integrity. Halima Atman reports. 93 out of 120 nations in the non-aligned movement have gathered in Kampala for the 19th summit of the movement for the plenary session that began Monday. Arab nations made clear that Gaza must be the focus of the meeting. Delegates said the NAM summit must find the right language to address what they called the violent and savage aggression by the state of Israel in perpetuating a genocide in Gaza. A delegate from Mauritius said the summit must make a political declaration on the war, which broke out October 7th after the Palestinian militant group Hamas attacked Israel, killing 1,200 people and taking about 240 hostage, 105 of whom were released in November. Israeli's military response has killed 24,000 Palestinians. Riyad Mansour, the Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations, said he does not expect any country to disagree with calling for a ceasefire and humanitarian assistance for the 2.3 million Palestinians displaced from their homes. We are not asking for anything other than standing with us against this aggression. We are facing a massive calamity. I don't think that it is exaggeration from us to expect support from our brothers and sisters from the movement. Uganda recently took over chairmanship of the non-aligned movement from Azerbaijan. Vincent Bajire, the permanent secretary at the Ugandan Ministry of Foreign Affairs, says the agenda for the plenary session will be decided by consensus. We have not subjected the matter of Palestine and Gaza to whether it should be the major topic that we discuss. So Uganda will uh, focus on creating cohesion within uh, the movement to ensure that we can work together as a movement uh, for the good of humanity. Delegates from Somalia are calling for the 120-state movement to support its territorial integrity and sovereignty. Early this month, Ethiopia signed an agreement with Somaliland, a breakaway region from Somalia, giving Ethiopia access to the sea. In return, Ethiopia would consider recognizing Somaliland as an independent country. Hamza Adan Hado is the permanent secretary in the Somali Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And that it violates our rights, our integrity and our unit. So that's why we are pushing and we believe the peace that we had will contribute if a non-alignment movement uh, members uh, stand with us. Both Somalia and Palestine have five days to convince delegates to prioritize their concerns and come up with resolutions before heads of state fly into Uganda for the summit at the end of this week. Halima Athmani for VA News, Kampala, Uganda. A suicide bomb blast in Somalia's capital city, Mogadishu, killed three people and injured two others. The militant group Al-Shabaab is claiming responsibility. A police spokesperson told Reuters a suicide bomber being pursued by police blew himself up outside the Al-Hind restaurant in Mogadishu's Hama Wain district. The Al-Qaeda-affiliated Al-Shabaab group said in a statement that the blast had targeted local security officials. Al-Shabaab frequently attacks military outposts and civilian and government targets as part of a campaign to topple Somalia's government and rule based on its interpretation of Islamic Sharia law. A Turkish court has convicted the son of Somalia's president today in the death of a motorcycle career and sentenced him two and a half years in prison. The AP says it then commuted the sentence to a $910 fine. Mohammed Hassan Sheikh Mohamud was charged with causing death by negligence after a, diplom a diplomatic car he was driving hit the motorcyclist on a highway in Istanbul in November. The motorcyclist died six days later. Turkish media report said uh, Mohamud returned to Turkey last week to testify about the accident. 
A Burundi journalist is appealing her 10 year prison term as the country's Supreme Court. Florian Irangavi, who was convicted of undermining the integrity of Burundi's national territory, has been detained since August 2022. After a brief hearing last week in the capital Bujumbura, Irangaviye was returned to prison to await the court's verdict. The case against Irangaviye is connected to her work as a commentator and host at Radio Ijichaniro, a diaspora-based online outlet that is often critical of the government. The journalist's lawyers have renewed calls for her to be released. The role of human rights organizations is crucial in reigning in countries that do not, ab do not abide by the international law. So innocent journalists such as Florian's Ilan Gavigli, who didn't do anything wrong other than performing her duties as a journalist, are not kept in prison for another day, said Tony Nkina, Idangavie's attorney. Local and international press freedom groups have echoed those calls for Idangavie's release. Frolian Idangavie does not belong in prison, said Alexandre Niyungeko, chair of the Journalist Association in Burundi. We once again urge the government of Burundi to release her so she can be with her family and continue to do her journalism. When a court first convicted Ilangaviye, the Committee to Protect Journalists and Reporters Without Borders or RSF both warned of the chilling effect the jailing could have. Sadibo Malong, the director of RSF Sub-Saharan African Bureau, said in a statement that last year that the case intended to silence all critical voices in Burundi. This heavy sentence is extremely worrying and shows that Froliani Langaviye was specifically targeted by the authorities over her work as a journalist Malong said. The authorities were unable to provide any tangible evidence about uh, their false accusations. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe.